You don't want to smell what this motor's been cooking. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the SCX24 budget build off. In this series, Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself take the Axial SCX24 and we upgrade it with $50 every week. This is an eight week series and this is week six. This week we're going to be talking about motors because the motor that came in my Axial SCX24 is done. It is cooked. It has exceeded its functional lifetime. So I needed to get it replaced. And there's a number of options in the SCX24 arena. So we're gonna talk about the differences between them as well as kind of the price ranges and the pros and cons of each style. The two main classifications for motors in RC are brushed, and brushless, and that's no different in the Axial SCX24 area. The motor that comes factory in the SCX24 is a brushed motor. I have a couple of 1 10th scale motors here to my side here, and I'm gonna use these as kind of demonstrations because even though they are different sizes, the principles are mainly the same. Starting with a brushed motor. How these motors work is that you have the motor can, the outside part, the part that you bolt to the motor plate, that has a couple of permanent magnets on the inside of this can. Those two magnets interact with the rotor that you have that runs down the center of the motor. And that is what your pinion attaches to. Now, this rotor has a number of copper windings around it, and it's got a commutator here at the top. Now, that commutator is what interacts with the brushes. That's why it's called a brushed motor. The brushes touch this commutator at the top. The combination of the current flowing through the brushes into the commutator and then through the windings on the motor, you create an electromagnet. And as the rotor spins, the brushes go from segment to segment on the commutator and that's what changes the poles and makes the motor spin. It's a simplified explanation. There's some great explanations on how DC electric motors work. These are the most simple type of electric motor. Now, being that you have brushes physically touching the top side of this motor, you have a wear pattern and a drag. Those brushes over time will wear out. And since they're physically touching the motor, you also have a little bit more drag. Therefore, you also have less efficiency. A brush motor is not as efficient as a brushless motor. It has a shorter lifespan and in general, doesn't create as much power pound for pound as a brushless motor will. Next to it, I've got a brushless motor. Now, this is an outrunner style motor. Brushless outrunner motors are not as common in 110 scale RC as brushless inrunners, but in the 124 scale side, brushless outrunners seem to be kind of the most common brushless motor options that are used. So that's what I've got taken apart here to show you. Brushless motors act much differently than brushed motors. Now on the brushless side, the piece with the magnets is what's spinning, not the piece with the windings. The part with the windings is stationary. Unlike the brush motor, which just had two brushes coming in, one for the positive lead, one for the negative lead, on a brushless motor, you have three leads. To run these motors, you do need a more sophisticated controller, and it has to be able to switch between the phases that it's powering to keep this motor running. Brushless motors like this make a lot of power, but they're more expensive to buy initially, and they take a more sophisticated controller to be able to do all of that switching. A DC motor can run on something as simple as a switch. And unlike the brushed motor, there are no brushes in contact with anything on a brushless motor, thus the name brushless. The only thing that's actually in contact is the actual shaft riding on the bearings through the center of the motor. It makes for almost no maintenance as far as actual parts wearing out. Now, if you end up getting a lot of debris in there, you can cause you know, premature wearing, you can knock a magnet off, things like that. But 
For the most part, the amount of maintenance that a brushless motor needs over time is much less. For this project, I needed to decide which route I was going to go. You can go very inexpensive with motors very similar to the stock one that are just a little bit larger for a little bit more power that are fairly cheap. You can get them that were came stock in the ECX Barrage. Pretty decent motor, people are pretty happy with those. The other option on the other end of the spectrum would be to take full advantage of brushless technology. Pound for pound, they produce more power, they're more efficient when compared directly to a motor of their same size, and just in general, no maintenance is nice as well. But the cost is much higher on those systems as I would have to replace both the motor and the ESC and any parts that would have to go along with that swap. In the case of the Furitech options, such as things like custom motor plate and gears to make everything happy with each other. The route that I decided to go was with an option from PN Racing. Now, this motor here is a much larger than factory motor option, but it is brushed. So I can still use that brushed ESC that came with the vehicle for this time. This is a 90 turn 130 sized brushed motor, but it's a very nice build quality on the motor. It's a fully rebuildable motor. PN Racing is not new into the market. They're huge in the mini Z world. This is a really nice option. And overall the build quality of this motor super high. But like I said, it is larger than the stock one. So much like the Furitech brushless setup, I also have to purchase an aluminum motor mount that moves the motor to the front side of the transmission. Now, it is nice that it moves it to the front side. It gives me a little bit more forward bias. Being that it is a larger motor, it also needs to clear some of the things in the front, such as the upper links, which does mean that it raises it a little bit. Now we've talked a lot about center of gravity over these weeks. Having to raise the motor is not ideal, but as long as we pay as close attention to the other aspects of the build as possible, we can have a little bit of trade off in areas like this to get the better performance from this motor while having a little bit of a hit on center of gravity. Another thing to note is that you will also need to upgrade the pinion and spur gear because this does use a two millimeter output shaft and that's not compatible with the factory pinion gear. So they have an option for the machined spur gear and Delrin pinions. So add that as well. You can get it all in a package deal and save a decent amount by getting it all at once versus picking and choosing as you go. Make sure to note that. I'll link to these products in the description below so you can find exactly where I got these pieces. You can put the same in one of your rigs. But now it's time to jump into this installation. To start, we need to remove the transmission and the drive shafts from the vehicle. Once the transmission is out, we can remove the gear cover, we can remove the stock spur gear, the stock motor, and the motor plate. Now that you just have the bare transmission case, we can start installing the new PN Racing parts. We can start with the aluminum motor plate. Install this aluminum motor plate using the same screws that were holding the stock motor plate into place. Now you can locate that new PN Racing 90 turn motor. You'll also need the secondary motor mounting piece that was included with the motor plate. This piece will bolt directly to the brushed motor. Once you have that attached to the motor, you can then grab the pinion gears. These pinion gears just press on. There's three different pinion gears included with the spur and pinion combo. I chose the one in the middle. We're gonna try that first, see if I'd like either more speed or less speed, and I'll swap out those pinions accordingly. Take and press the pinion on until it's flush with the end of the motor shaft. Next, you can install the spur gear onto the top shaft and replace the nut that was holding the stock spur gear in place. Once that's installed, put the motor in place onto the motor plate and attach it with the two two millimeter screws from the side. You'll need to set your gear mesh here with whatever method you find to be the most appropriate. You can use a piece of paper if you like, but it's worth noting that the stock spur gear has a lot of wiggle just by the nature of the very small plastic transmission case. I set mine visually. Once I got it tightened down, I made sure that there was a little bit of movement between the spur gear and the pinion gear before I was just 100% set on the position. 
Now that you have the whole package assembled, you can drop it back into the vehicle and reattach the drive shafts just like they came out. Once you get to this point, it would normally be plug and play into the stock ESC. However, we went through that whole decasing process. So for me, I had to get out the soldering iron and solder these leads directly back to the board. I could have taken and soldered the old motor leads onto the new motor, but I decided to go the other way. Now that we've got everything installed, I was able to do a little bit of testing. My stock motor, like I said, was done. So it wouldn't hardly power itself up any obstacles anymore. To do a little bit of testing, I set up some of the cell blocks that I like to use here in the studio to test and was able to pull up on top of them now finally, which I hadn't been able to do previously. My motor had got pretty tired. I didn't have the speed. It wouldn't, didn't want to turn these large little guy racing parts tires and it was just time for the upgrade. This thing going to work great. Really looking forward to continuing to tune this truck now that it's got more power. But that pretty much does it for the install of products for this week. This was a really simple installation, but one that I think is going to make a huge difference while driving. Really happy that I went this route. I like the brushed motors with these. I think they're nice and simple, compact. I was able to keep the weight down as much as possible and move the motor forward. So overall, I'm happy with the compromise of slightly higher, although forward, but way more power. I actually had a second one of these that I've been running for quite a while. So I have a little bit more drive time on it than just what we saw in this truck. So I can say that I recommend it, really been enjoying it. Overall, the power has been a huge improvement to the driving experience of this SCX24. With that, let's find out how much we spent this week. The 90 turn motor from PN Racing is an affordable motor choice at just $14.99. A absolutely screaming deal for that motor, I have to say. But like I mentioned, you do have to buy their motor mount and you will need spur and pinions. The motor mount option was $24.99 and the spur and pinion set was $17.88. As mentioned, I'm going to link to these products in the description below. You save money by clicking and adding all the options in one place rather than adding them individually. So make sure you do that, save yourself a little bit of money. So the total for those three products is $57.86. Adding the $50 for this week's budget onto our remainder of $26.02 from last week gives us a total of $76.02. And if we subtract what we spent this week, leaves us with $18.16 still. So still a little bit of budget getting carried over, allowing us to spend a little bit more next week. Looking forward to it. We only have two more weeks of the budget build before this series is over. Make sure you go check out Matt's video for week six as well. As always, appreciate you guys for watching these videos. Hit the like button if you enjoy them. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see these videos as soon as they get uploaded. As always, Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.